hello hello welcome back to nine little aussies i'm chrissy today in my garden i am seeking to do some potting um i got interrupted a few times did a few different things got some more seeds in the garden but i'll take you along on the ride and we'll see what we get done today all right so my seed sowing plant potting up little workspace here will have to wait until I get more potting mix. So I'm going to instead put more seeds in the garden while I wait. Now, my first thought about doing this, hmm, how can I balance you? Okay, I'm going to put some peas and I know I was like, I need my pea and my bean garden in that's not in, and I don't want to wait any longer. I, so I'm going to pop, and I actually think I'm a bit late getting these in, but there's a little space down there on that fence line. I'm going to put those in. These are seed tape ones that I was given, beetroot, carrots, some more radishes. I've heard mixed stories about seed tape, but I was given them. So I'm going to use them and see if I can run them down there on that other side. I have already down on this little back fence, I did a little while ago put nasturtiums in here. They haven't come up yet. Uh, well, actually I see a little green sprout. It might be a nasturtium, but I'm going to try and put them like in between where the nasturtiums were. Yeah, six, I don't know. we'll see how these guys go. One inch depth. Now this bed down here, I haven't really put anything in yet. And I'm not sure how things are gonna go because on the other side, I have tomatoes. And when they grow up, they're gonna provide a lot of shade here. Um, so I was tossing up what to put there. I have asparagus that I have to figure out where to put, but I think it likes full sun. I have heaps more of these beetroots and other vegetables that like a good amount of sun so but I'm also running out of space for seed tape because you kind of need a long thin strip which is what I like about seeds I can just poke them here and there everywhere um, I think I'm going to sew a, a long strip a couple of strips here and we'll just see how they go and it may be that they grow um, before it gets too shady here and also we've got a lot of heat coming up from this sun when it's overhead this garden will get pummeled um, with sun you know as this as the spring comes on and then we go into summer it will get really hot out here so I don't know we'll see I have popped carrots at that end. I've done radishes all the way down the front of the bed. And I'm popping these, <laughs> flutter, flutter. I'm popping these um, beetroot or beets as they're called here in the middle. And I'm thinking I may, I may just go get a different variety of peas and put it at the back. And we'll just, we'll just see. I honestly feel like right now, everything on this farm, everything in this garden, everything that we're doing is an experiment <laughs> in a way, because even if we've grown it before, we've grown it in a completely different country, in a different climate, uh, different pests, different 
everything. Like it's still the soil and you know, the world, the, the Lord still operates the same, but it is different and there's different nuances I'm having to sort of figure out. So we'll pop it in and we'll see what we learn from it as we go. As I was just sitting here getting getting sweaty as I sow these seeds, I was just thinking how you the hot that you we reap what we sow. And I hope <laughs> the hope is I'm gonna reap a lot of vegetables, herbs, flowers to cut and put on my table good food to eat. I'm hoping to learn a lot more about preserving this year. Um, uh, my mother-in-law keeps saying to me, get those beans in, honey. We're going to can as soon as they're ready. <laughs> She's keen. So I, um, I'm excited for that, but I, it just, it's such, you know, so many things in the garden. Like I was talking last time about the importance of beauty in our lives and how our souls need that. We need beauty. We're all sowing something. We can sow beauty or we can sow ugly. We're all sowing something, aren't we? And I kind of, like even as I say it, I'm like, oh, that's so basic. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that we're sowing in our lives and we get to choose what we're sowing. But you look around you at the world and I'm like, does everyone know that? I don't know. I don't know. We can sow faith, we can sow fear. And a lot of times, a lot of times fear masquerades as wisdom. Hmm. A lot of times fear masquerades as wisdom. Are we going to sow fear or are we going to sow faith? Kind words or harsh words? Thoughtfulness or selfishness? We will reap eventually what we sow. You know, I feel like it's the a, a thing I say to my children a hundred times a day. But I need to remind myself as well. This looks like... This looks like nut grass. Let me see. Yeah, it's got a little nut. I was hoping I could get away from nut grass coming overseas, but apparently not. Ugh. I had a garden bed in Queensland that was just infested with nut grass and we'd pull it and pull it and pull it and back she'd come. I don't know what this little guy is. I'll try to let it keep growing. It's kind of the heat of the day right now in that afternoon period. So rather than being out in the hot sun, I've decided to now my husband bought back some potting mix. He saved the day. So I'm going to open this up and plant some flowers. I have another packet of that. So I could do more of those that I did earlier in the big pot. I've got pansies and I have been warned they don't do very well in the heat here in Texas and they're better in the cooler seasons. I'm wondering if they'll be okay in a pot in the shade. If you're a Texan and you know these things, please tell me. What are the best flowers for hanging pots on a veranda? These bachelor's buttons, they say, it says it's good for borders, bouquets, containers. Um, this one's drought tolerant. The 
They're called a four o'clock. I don't know that I've ever heard of them, although they look similar to something I've seen before. So it might be good in a pot if they cope well. Forget-me-nots, purple, alisum, sweet alice. I'm going to use what I've got, but I would like to know if you happen to know what flowers are particularly good in Texas through the spring and summer um, to handle the weather here. That would be handy. All right, let's start with this big one. So all of these um, were rescued out of um, either dumpsters or people throwing them away. Like, okay, I'll use them. <laughs> Missed. This is a really big bag. Usually I would kind of tip the bag, but this is a really, it's one of those extra large size bags my husband bought me. He's a good man. Give me home goodies like that. <laughs> I think I'll put some maybe forget-me-nots. Maybe with sweet oats. I don't know. I'll just try it. But So many good lessons like that, isn't there, in the garden. I love that. The Lord is so amazing how he teaches us things. You know, so many of the parables in the Bible were based around an agrarian life that was lived at the time. So many lessons in the on the farm, in the garden, in the basic things of life. Maybe that'll do those. And I just need to remind myself of that every day. What am I sowing today? What am I sowing into my children? What am I sowing into my husband? What am I sowing to my neighbors and my friends and the people I know. And it's not dependent on my circumstances. No matter what's going on, we all get to choose what we sow. I've had life throw some pretty big curveballs at me over the decades. Anyone who knows me knows that is true. Unexpected difficult things that I've had to deal with. One of the most recent of which was in 2019. And I did share about this on my blog, but um, I had a nine month old baby at the time and my husband was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And we were told that without immediate medical intervention, he would have five weeks to live. And even with medical intervention, they didn't know if they could save him because it was so advanced. Um, and one of the things that got me through that time was taking my eyes off my own problems and sowing life into others. It's actually something my husband taught me many, many years before when we were going through another very difficult time, a very rocky time. And he said to me one day, I was just very low. I was at a very low point and not coping particularly well. And he said, why don't we think about someone that we can reach out to and help or bless? Someone who's going through a hard time. Someone who is um, suffering in some way. 
or you know whether it's illness or um, it could be anything it could be anything loneliness um, something hard and reach out to them and so love into them so hope into them so um, give of myself to somebody else and honestly it is one of the most powerful things you can do when you are in a tough spot and it's hard to do but when you do it it's like being in the garden you can breathe deeply again there is something within us about we will reap what we sow and whether it is I'm sowing these beautiful pretty delicate little sweet Alice and hopefully that is what I will reap hopefully in just a little while or if we're sowing words of kindness or if we're sowing selflessness and um, sowing hope into a hopeless situation that is also something that we can choose to do these are the things I the garden teaches you such wonderful things such beautiful lessons all right what should we put in this pot and then it's just a matter of saying Lord help me remember that <laughs> help me do that every day and not get distracted by life Okay, this one, I think maybe these little pretty pansies. I need to put this in first. You know, really the garden is just a reflection of the Lord because it's like we are made in his image. Aspects of his personality are all through his creation, all through his garden. And he says there is always hope. No situation too messed up for him to not be able to come and make something beautiful out of it and give you beauty for ashes. Pansies, pretty, pretty pansies. So the anyway, the end of that story is that my husband is still alive. Thank the Lord. It was a tough year, 2019, but we were given an absolute miracle in the end. All right, we'll cover him over a little. Pansies. Get me nuts and sweet Alice. And I'm gonna just plant these because I wanna see what these are like. And the bachelor's buttons, maybe I'll do one of those as well in that. Four little hanging baskets planted out. So I'll water those in and I think I'll keep them out the back here until they at least uh, shoot up with um, their little seeds because, seedlings, because I'm afraid if I take them out the front, either the dogs will get them, or if I hang them up, I'll forget to water them. Whereas once they're all going, I'll be able to see them and it'll trigger my mind. So I'm gonna keep them out the back here and I'll let you know how they go. So thank you for joining me as I sit out here in the beautiful breeze and plant something beautiful. It doesn't look like anything much right now we sort of wait in anticipation and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, have a fabulous Saturday, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.